Here's your wrestling news for November 20th, 2022. And we're kicking off with the main event of AEW Full Gear as the devil has got his due. As soon as MJF returned at AEW All Out, fans anticipated that the salt of the earth would at long last become AEW World Champion, and that happened last night under shocking circumstances. John Moxley immediately started on the assault, hoping to dissuade fans of the idea of a new champion, but momentum shifted back and forth between champion and challenger. Perhaps MJF's young age made Moxley a bit too sure of himself, as he was showboating a bit more than usual, which allowed the salt of the earth to take the advantage again. The stalemate continued for some time, but never lost the crowd, and it was William Regal who made the difference, but not on behalf of his Black Bull Combat Club ally. With the ref's back turned, Regal slipped MJF some brass knucks, and all it took was the power of the punch for MJF to get the pin and the AEW world title. It was a finish that many fans predicted, but that isn't a bad thing if the booking is right, and now the MJF era has begun with William Regal by his side. It wasn't just the AEW title that changed hands as Wardlow's time as AEW TNT champion has come to an end. In a meeting of AEW's beefiest stars, Wardlow defended against Powerhouse Hobbs and Ring of Honor World Television Champion Samoa Joe, and it was the Samoan submission machine who stood tall once the dust was settled. After a symphony of power bombs on Hobbs, it seemed like Wardlow had this in the bag, but Joe emerged to clock Mr. Mayhem with the title and lock in the coquina clutch on Hobbs for the win. With his victory, Joe makes history as the first man to hold an AEW and ROH title at the same time, and with ROH final battle mere weeks away, we'll have to see what comes next for the double champ. Full Gear also marked Soraya's first match in nearly five years, and while the build may not have been as smooth as fans would have liked, the emotions of this bout were second to none. The former Divas champion was evidently emotional as she made her way to the ring, and Britt Baker allowed a moment after the bell for everyone to appreciate Soraya's comeback. This heartwarming moment didn't last long as Baker quickly began to target the surgically repaired neck of the British star, and would throw in a glare or two to Zack Knight, Soraya's brother, at ringside. Not to be outdone, Soraya proved that she still got it, countering Baker's lockjaw submission into the page turner, now renamed the Nightcap. Soraya did show some ring rust, which we can hardly blame her for considering what she's gone through, ending with two of what used to be called the Rampage to put Baker down for good. The British wrestler has said that AEW is her house, and it's great that she's back doing what she loves after years of being told that she would never, ever wrestle again. More news from Full Gear, as the show marked the Elite's first match in nearly three months, challenging for the AEW trio's titles. Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks had won the titles at All Out, but were stripped of the gold following the backstage fight, and many believe that their victory at full gear was a sure bet. Fans in Newark didn't have to wait long to see the Elite, as the title match was second on the card, and the trio certainly got the spotlight, entering to Kansas' classic rock anthem, Carry On Wayward Son. The big story of the match was Pac trying to get Ray Phoenix to use his dastardly methods, and while he refused to reuse the ring bell hammer at first, Phoenix eventually embraced his darker side. When Omega tried to plant him with the one-winged angel, Phoenix used the ring bell hammer to counter, and this proved to be the difference maker as the Elite lost their first match back. The match gave everyone what they wanted, as fans of the Elite got to cheer the return, their haters got to celebrate, and everyone watching got treated to a fantastic match between six exceptional AEW stars. AEW Full Gear was the company's first pay-per-view since the All Out Brawl, and while CM Punk was not on the show, fans certainly had him on their mind. For the Elite's return match, fans made their views on the two-time former AEW World Champion known with loud CM Punk chants echoing around the Prudential Center. Punk's status with AEW is still up in the air as it's believed he will be released soon enough, and some have suggested that he's already been cut from the company. Tony Khan has avoided mentioning CM Punk for months, but in the latest Wrestling Observer newsletter, it was reported that Punk remains under an AEW contract at this time. As to how long that will be, that remains to be seen, but if by some miracle Tony Khan decides to bring CM Punk back to AEW programming, the problematic veteran shouldn't expect a warm reception. What do you make to this chant? Are you on Punk's side, or would you have been chanting with the fans at full gear? Let us know in the comments.
Full Gear was AEW's first pay-per-view since All Out, a show that will not be remembered for the matches, but rather what happened after the event went off the air. We all know about CM Punk's explosive comments and the backstage fight, and it was something Jim Ross referenced during Full Gear. During the Elite's first match back against Death Triangle, JR said how these two sides will settle the score behind closed doors in a locker room, a nod to the backstage fight. The Elite were part of that fight, but it has been reported that they did not start the fight, as CM Punk threw the first punch on that fateful September night. After the all-out fight, everyone in AEW was told to keep quiet about the matter, but with the investigation over and the Elite's return, we may get to hear more about what happened from AEW talent. Jim Ross may have had some fun during last night's Full Gear pay-per-view, but his commentary on Rampage left something to be desired. JR has been providing commentary on Rampage for some time now, but that didn't stop the WWE Hall of Famer from calling the show Dynamite, and this isn't the first time he's done so. Jim Ross isn't immune from making mistakes, having called Kenny Omega the WWE Champion during his AEW title run, and having referred to AEW stars by their former WWE names. It's worth mentioning that such mistakes are very rare, and that JR is considered by many to be the greatest commentator to ever don a headset, but these errors don't go unnoticed by the fans. Now this month marks 17 years since Eddie Guerrero's tragic passing at the age of 38, and his legacy has stood the test of time. While Eddie is no longer with us, his widow Vicky is part of AEW and paid tribute to the WWE Hall of Famer at full gear. For Nyla Rose's AEW TBS title match with champion Jade Cargill, Rose and Guerrero rode to the ring in a lowrider, and Vicky wore Eddie's I'm Your Poppy t-shirt. Unfortunately for Rose and Guerrero, it was Cargill who retained her title, extending her AEW undefeated streak, but this tribute is something fans will never forget. And that was AEW Full Gear, and a clear sign that AEW is moving on from All Out and moving on from CM Punk. But what would you rate this year's show? Sound off with your scores in the comments. Over to WWE as this month we'll see the annual Survivor Series event, which this year will feature the iconic War Games match. A staple of the NWA and WCW, November 26th will mark the first time War Games has been used on the main roster, but that could have been different years earlier. Speaking on his Oh You Didn't Know podcast, Road Dog Jesse James spoke about the upcoming War Games matches, saying that the shows are something Triple H has always wanted to do. Road Dog added that in 2019, Triple H pitched for the match to be used at Survivor Series, but that idea was immediately shot down by Vince McMahon. While no specific reason was given, Road Dog suggested that McMahon didn't like the idea of a non-WWE stipulation being such a big deal, and believes McMahon felt the match stepped on his own Hell in a Cell. With McMahon retired, Triple H has taken advantage of his role as head of creative to book the way he wants, and fans will finally see war games on the main roster, albeit three years later than the WWE COO had planned. At this year's WrestleMania, Stone Cold Steve Austin proved he could still go in the ring, holding his own and defeating Kevin Owens in the main event of Night One. Recently, there's been talk about Austin competing next year, and WWE have reportedly laid down the offer to the Texas Rattlesnake for a match at WrestleMania. Austin has been sharing videos of himself working out, which fans have taken as another sign of his wrestling future, but that isn't the case, according to the Bionic Redneck. In an Instagram video, Austin said that people can speculate all they want, but that his recent workouts are nothing more than just his efforts to lose a little bit of weight. Austin denied that these workout videos are teasing a WrestleMania match, but did not deny the rumors that he will wrestle next year, a fact that did not go missed by fans. In fact, many argued that his denial is just part of his strategy to return, as WWE doesn't want fans thinking he'll wrestle, which will make his match more of a surprise. Stone Cold looked fantastic at this year's WrestleMania, and we can see him having another match next year, but it'll ultimately be a decision only the Rattlesnake and WWE can make. Kevin Owens will probably think twice about a possible rematch with Stone Cold, but the prize fighter was revealed as the final member of Team Brutes to go up against the Bloodline at Survivor Series War Games during this week's SmackDown. Given that Owens suffered an injury at a WWE Live event just days earlier, there's been a ton of questions about his status heading into war games, but the prize fighter looked 100% after SmackDown. 
In a post-show dark match, Owen squared off against Austin Theory, the man who he'd suffered his torn MCL sprain against during that live event last Sunday. Their dark match wasn't just any match, but a street fight, and it was Owens who got the win on the new, more serious Theory. Owens was reportedly looking very well during the match and showed no sign of injury, so expect a prize fighter to be 100% when he enters war games this month. Back to AEW, as Kensuke Takeshita has won over fans in recent months, competing against the likes of John Moxley and Claudio Castagnoli, and fans will soon be seeing much more of him. On Twitter, Tony Khan confirmed that Takeshita is officially All Elite after having signed his contract with the company on Friday. Fightful reports that the AEW roster have been extremely happy with the decision to sign him to a contract, and we'll have to see what Takeshita does next as an official AEW wrestler. During this week's AEW Dynamite, Jon Moxley closed out the show with a promo against MJF, but this war of words was odd to say the least. Moxley was noticeably off his game for the segment, getting the day of the Full Gear pay-per-view wrong and, at one point, walked off midway, only to return and have a stare-down with MJF. On social media, fans addressed Moxley's behavior, with some fearing the worst as that he had suffered some kind of alcohol relapse after entering rehab last year. Others suggested that this was just a case of Moxley being mentally checked out and said that the ex-WWE superstar is thinking about the vacation he had scheduled for after All Out that he never got to have. Whatever the case is, we hope that Moxley's okay and keeping away from the alcohol and that this week's Dynamite was just a very rare off night for the popular wrestler. And we're ending today with AEW Fight Forever, as the promotion's first console game got a new trailer this week, but the biggest story wasn't about who was featured in the trailer, but rather who wasn't. At the end of the video, fans saw their first glimpse of the new cover art for AEW Fight Forever, which has seen the removal of CM Punk. Fans were quick to react on social media, with many taking this as another sign that Punk is done with the company, and some argued that removing Punk has tarnished Fight Forever. Some speculated as to why the Young Bucks are not on the new art, but Kenny Omega is, as all three were suspended for their roles in the all-out backstage fight. CM Punk was literally once the poster child for AEW, but those days have come and gone, and while there's still no confirmation on when the game will be out, don't expect Punk to be on the cover or as a playable character. Well guys, that's our news for today. Please share your comments below. Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.